Yes. So hello everyone. Uh, hello and welcome to the seventh Digital Europe Economic Seminar. Uh, today we have the pleasure to host uh, Dr. Marcelo Tambusio uh, of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna. Uh, so Dr. Tambusio holds a bachelor's degree in mathematics, a master's degree in computer science, and a PhD in computer science, uh, completed at the University of Turin. Her main research focus is on misinformation and fake news spread across social networks as well as on the influence of social media on public opinion and the effectiveness of fact-checking. Uh, we're going to have approximately 40 minutes for presentation. And then afterwards, we're going to have some time for questions. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Tamusha, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So, hello, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as uh, um, uh, when they present me, uh, I am Marcello Tambuscio. Uh, I work now at the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities and Cultural, Cultural Heritage at Austrian Academy of Science. Uh, but I need to mention University of Turin because the, most of the results that I will show today are part of the research that I uh, did during my PhD there. Um, so, um, I will give you an outline of this talk. Um, I will give a brief introduction about why and how we study information, but actually I will focus more on misinformation. That was the main topic of my uh, PhD thesis, so fake news. Um, I will uh, then present uh, a model for misinformation spreading. Um, I will uh, talk a bit about segregation and polarization phenomena in information spreading processes. And then we will talk about uh, evaluation of the banking strategies to trying to limit uh, misinformation spreading. So, why we study uh, misinformation or misinformation? Uh, this is an example um, about uh, the um, perceptions uh, of fake news during the pandemic by uh, US citizens. Um, many citizens um, in this uh, survey um, claimed uh, that uh, they were exposed to made up stories. Uh, but when the, they uh, answer about the topic of these stories, they give also, um, let's say, contradicting claims. Um, for example, if you look here, magnitude of the risk, they um they claim that uh, a made news made up news was that is not a serious trait and is like a flu or that we will see millions of deaths that is some contradicting information so it is also true that um the information can be perceived as misinformation and um uh, also in the opposite way. So what we can uh, say is that misinformation is a hot topic uh, of the last decade. And um, let's say the post-truth was the word of the, um, selected by Oxford English Dictionary in 2016 after um, the Brexit uh, and the US election won by um, Donald Trump. Um, and um, many media uh, claim that we live in a post-truth uh, era. Uh, so I think that we are now uh, familiar with this um, terminology about fake news, um, uh, misinformation, uh, and uh, propaganda and all this stuff. 
uh, of course, there are several levels of, uh, um, uh, let's say, of um, 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 several levels uh, um, of danger uh, in, in this misinformation, but uh, um, we can have some uh, meme like uh, this one that can <laughs> spread in the internet. But uh, uh, as uh, we all know, for example, uh, fake news related to health or politics can have several uh, dangerous uh, effects. So, uh, of course, we live in a hyper-connected society and uh, um, uh, the, um, the role of social media is uh, really important um, in this uh, spreading processes. Um, we have um, that these distributed uh, technologies uh, provide a bottom-up approach to communication an horizontal way, uh, and this is sure, surely um, a good thing on uh, uh, one side, because it can democratize the uh, exchange of information, um, and, but also the, the, the absence of central authorities, uh, as I mentioned, uh, provides um, an horizontal um, uh, way of uh, communicate, um, but all this stuff are also um, ingredients um, to, uh, let's say, advantage the um, uh, spreading of misinformation. For example, different languages and context, the uh, different contexts that uh, uh, can mix together. So for example, it is difficult to um understand satirical content uh, um, in different cultures um, and also this um, social media we have to remind that 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 they have been created to connect like-minded people um, so this is their um, main uh, objective uh, so this combined with uh, uh, the filtering algorithms can lead to the formation of echo chambers um, and filter bubbles. And finally, the presence of social bots and technologies as deep fake can help um, in the, the, the spread of misinformation uh, in this platform. So we don't want to target social media as Evil, but uh, um, we need to um, admit that this is the perfect environment to fake news spreading, even if, of course, the misinformation is not uh, a new problem, it's something that exists since a long time. So um, we can see the results of um, uh, a survey in which we can see that uh, the percentage of um, US citizens that list at least uh, one social media site uh, increased a lot uh, in this last 20 years. And also the, um, the, the, the many of these, um, many users uh, of these platforms use the platforms to regularly get news there. Um, so, uh, of course, this is uh, um, a very important feature if we study the, the spread of misinformation. In, uh, the, there is a similar situation in Europe. This is a survey about Europe. Um, we see several um, European countries in which um, the percentage of ages that get news uh, sometimes uh, from social media is very high. Um, so this was um, like a manifesto uh, of scientists uh, that has been uh, written in 2018 
um, by the major experts uh, of, about misinformation spreading. And um, it appears in science and um, they um, pointed out that actually we have still a few scientific answers about this problem. So it is not a phenomenon that has been um, completely understood yet. Um, and um, they tried to uh, define an agenda to um, uh, trying to limit uh, and uh, to um, uh, contain the fake news spreading. Uh, and they identifying they identified mainly uh, two strategies. Uh, the first was to empower individuals to so to um, of course uh, um, empower fact checking uh, uh, platforms. Uh, and the other one is to um, make, struct make, make structural changes uh, in uh, online platforms trying to prevent the exposures to fake news. Um, so about fact checking, actually we have a long story about uh, the banking services in the internet. Um, here we have some um, examples of platforms that in the last years um provide um, uh, verifying services um, of the news or they try to track uh, fake news stories um, but uh, of course also uh, social media are trying to um, take uh, some um, um, actions uh, trying to to limit, uh, for example, here there is a famous post of Mark Zuckerberg after the um, U.S. election in 2016. Um, he tried to um, give a, um, um, some ideas, uh, and actually some of them um, has been implemented. So, for example the possibility to report in Facebook uh, uh, stories as fake. So if many users uh, report the story as fake, uh, this can be uh, labeled with a warning like this, uh, or to show related articles um, with, um, let's say, higher credibility. Um, and uh, so, I mean, they are some um, attempts uh, to trying to, to, to limit uh, the, fake, the fake news spreading. But uh, it has been studied that uh, fact-checking sometimes can be effective. This is a research about um, Facebook's researchers uh, in 2014. Uh, they studied this um, um, retweet network um, of stories and uh, in red you can see um, um, some users that have been received a comment with a, uh, with a link to Snopes that is a fact-checking uh, site. So uh, we can see that uh, actually this Red um, um, uh, nodes are um, at the periphery, let's say, of the networks. So it can be um, seen that in somehow they stop the spread of uh, misinformation. But what is very important here is the uh, if you see the the plot on the right, is that uh, um, there is a high probability that uh, the content that the story is uh, has been deleted from the from Twitter if uh, it receives uh, a fact-checking um, tweet. 
uh, this is wonderful maybe for society <laughs> but it's also a problem for scientists that want to study uh, fake news spreading because of course uh, we if we don't um, let's say track the information spreading in streaming uh, um, we we have to deal with uh, uh, a lot of deleted content that we cannot uh, uh, access anymore uh, so it, it will be um, a problem for misinformation for um, research about misinformation uh, on the other hand fact checking uh, may fail uh, from a psychological point of view uh, it has been studied uh, that uh, there are several effects that can uh, be involved um uh, in uh, in misinformation spreading um one is the hyper correction effect so when the fact checking uh, um is not um uh, let's say um made uh, uh, well uh, it's like uh, uh, that uh, the people remind only the the hoax the fake news and they don't remember the fact checking uh, but also uh, we have the backfire effect uh, that means that uh, when you uh, are exposed to the fact checking uh, but uh, it's your um, let's say the the fake news um, uh, is um, um, let's say it's aligned with your previous beliefs, um, the, the, the fact-checking can um, also worse the, the situation. And if this is connected with the confirmation bias, so the, um, the fact that you can cherry-picking data to support personal belief or expectation. Uh, so what we did was to uh, take inspiration from epidemic models to study the misinformation spreading. Uh, we see the information as a virus uh, that can infect people. Uh, I think that um, now many of us are familiar with this uh, uh, epidemic uh, processes. And um, uh, this is the, the most famous one, the SIR um, model. We have a population in which we have uh, uh, three types of uh, um, the agents can take three types of states. We have the susceptible, the infected, and the recovered. And uh, the, the agent changed the status uh, according to some um, equation of transition that depends on some parameter like beta, this is the uh, spreading rate, and uh, gamma is the recovery rate. Uh, so usually we have a dynamics as the one um, we, you can see uh, on the plot. Uh, in which we have the infected that um, grow uh, and then the, they decrease and the recover it uh, takes all the uh, all the the network. So we take in, we took inspiration from this SIR model to build um, a model uh, about uh, um, fake news spreading. So we have three, state, three states possible. We have the susceptible, so a person who ignore completely uh, about the fake news. Then we have the believer, and then we have the fact checker. Um, we modeled um, a spreading process um, in which a susceptible can become believer or fact checker depending on how on the status of uh, its neighbors. Um, so, okay, if here maybe the formulas are a bit complicated, but uh, of course, if you have um, more neighbor um, that are believer, you are more likely to become believer and 
the same for uh, fact checkers. Um, but this um, this uh, function depends also on the spreading rate that we can see the speed uh, of the uh, oaks spreading and the credibility of the spreading of the of the hoax. Then we mod we modeled uh, um, a verified process, so the probability of fact checking that is a, a parameter also of the model and a forgetting rate, um, because um, it is also mm, known by um, psychologists that. Uh, um, run several experiments and actually the, they saw that uh, the sometimes people who, who believe to a story and then they were exposed to the fact checking then forget uh, and after some while that they believe again to to that story so it's uh, something that uh, has been observed so we decided to uh, add this uh, forgetting uh, uh, process. Uh, so this is the model uh, that uh, we studied. And uh, for people who, is, who are familiar with this type of uh, epidemic model, we have to tell that uh, this is like an SIS. Um, and indeed, the, the the sum of the of the function gives exactly the beta that is the spreading rate. Uh, if you want to play with this model, we have also um, a platform, um, a framework uh, developed in NetLogo uh, that can uh, allow you to play with agents. Uh, here there is the link. Uh, it has been developed by Emilio Sulis uh, um, at the University of Turin. So the dy dynamics of our model um, can be summarized uh, in these two plots. Uh, we can have two situations, one in which the um, hoax uh, is eradicated from the network uh, on the left, and one in which uh, the, um, the hoax uh, become endemic in the network. Uh, the parameters that rule the hoax persistence uh, are the hoax credibility alpha and the fact-checking probability, the verifying probability. So of course, low credibility, high uh, fact-checking probability uh, limit the misinformation spreading and on uh, the contrary uh, high credibility and low verifying probability um, help the fake news spreading. Uh, we studied how evolves the numbers of believers at the equilibrium varying these two parameters alpha and p verify and with some mean field analysis that we <laughs> borrowed from physics, we found uh, that we have a threshold uh, on the p verify that uh, allow to um, um, eradicate the the, net, the, um, the the hoax from the networks. Um, so the the probability, the 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 number of believers at the um, uh, infinite time is zero. Okay. Okay. Uh, here there is the the theoretical, uh, let's say, um, analytical plot, but it is supported also by agent simulation. So this is um, our first conclusion. We we show a model in which we have a competition of the hoax versus the, 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 the banking, a forgetting method, uh, mechanism and uh, uh, fact-checking in the same model. Uh, and this is the first attempt at, uh, to our knowledge. Uh, then we have a threshold. Uh, we show that we have a threshold on the verified probabilities that provides an idea of how many fact-checkers are needed to guarantee the removal of the hoax. 
I want to stress that actually our um, um, model is, of course, not the only one, it's just one of the possible models. Um, but uh, many models do not uh, pay attention to this competition uh, between the rumor and the debunking. Uh, we thought it was important to study um, also the, uh, how these two mechanisms can compete on the network. Um, so, uh, on the other hand, we have to um, talk about segregation and polarization because um, you know societies often exhibit structured, uh, segregated structures in function of some um, features like, uh, for example, religious belief, age, economic status, um, sorry, ethnic group or other. And this is, uh, for example, uh, um, the shelling segregation model. It is a very uh, famous model in sociology um, and shelling um, um, showed how uh, residential, seg residential segregation can uh, arise also when uh, individual um, involved individuals are tolerant. So the segregation is something that we can really observe uh, around us and we need to uh, take in, uh, into account when we study um, phenomena like uh, information spreading. Um, and then we have the homophily principle that uh, is the principle um, according uh, uh, with uh, we have we tend to be similar to our friends and this is an interplay of two phenomena uh, we have that similar nodes tend to connect each other uh, in reality or in social media so this is the selection but also connected nodes uh, become more similar uh, once they are connected so this is the the social influence um, uh, anyway, we have that uh, um, the polarization um, em emerged from a radicalized um, segregation, but not necessarily uh, a segregated network is also polarized. Um, and uh, we know that some topics are strongly divisive, like, as you can imagine, politics. Uh, and lead to the formation of echo chambers. This is an example of a very famous example about uh, the blogs in the 2004 US election um, by uh, Lada Adamic uh, that showed that uh, there were this very um, segregated group of um, um, political parties, let's say. Uh, these are examples that I studied uh, personally um, to sh just to show how uh, the polarization and the, um, can can emerge in several ways. So, for example, here we have a, um, a, a hashtag networks of the tweets about the Vienna attack uh, of the last uh, November here in Vienna. We collected the, the tweets uh, during that night, and then we built this network about uh, with um, let's say the, with the, about hashtags that co-occur together, and uh, we can highlight uh, several communities in this network. And uh, I don't know if you can read, but you can see the orange community is related to the. Uh, US and because they were the election in that uh, moment, so there were the election. Then we have the yellow uh, that is uh, very small, but is the, the maybe the central one because um, it involved the, the Austrian debate uh, and indeed there, there were all the um, 
uh, let's say uh, hashtag in uh, German and this uh, <laughs> not pronounceable <laughs> hashtag that was very popular during uh, the attack. And then we have the, the green that was the more international and we have the violet on the top that was related to Turkey um, because it was related to, to, to Erdogan and uh, another one to Armenia. Maybe it is not um, easy to see, but we, we have several, um, we have a few uh, hashtags uh, relate to Armenia because in that, those days there were uh, also problems there. Um, so just to show that the hashtags reflect the geography in, in this uh, case. Um, so there can be um, an influence uh, of the, uh, let's say, given simply by the, 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 the geography or given by mutable uh, factors, uh, like, for example, in this case, we studied the opinion dynamics during the uh, Brexit uh, um, uh, referendum. Uh, we collected 5 million of English tweets um, and um, we uh, developed uh, um, mach with machine learning uh, uh, an automatic detection of the sense. So we labeled uh, users um, as um, uh, in favor of leave or remain uh, or neutral ones. Uh, and uh, we also then run community detection and we can see that there is a clear overlap of the communities with the sense detection that we uh, run. Um, so in this case, for example, um, the, let's say the um, debate and the opinion dynamics uh, was ruled by uh, the stance. We did a similar um, work uh, studying the um, Italian referendum in 2016, yes, uh, studying um, uh, some Italian tweets. And in this case, um, we study how the community evolves in times because this is also another um, problem that uh, um, of course the uh, opinion dynamic is not uh, um, temporal, temporally static of course and uh, uh, it can evolve so here we show that um, for example the follower networks um, was highly polarized um, and we have several uh, phases of um, in which we collected and analyzed the, the tweets. Uh, we um, add, uh, we highlight uh, four events. Um, there was like um, a very famous um, um, article in The Economist. Um, uh, that uh, has been debated in Italy, then there was a demonstration, then there was a very famous TV debate, and then the day of the referendum um, outcome. And we can see that uh, the, the networks are highly polarized, uh, but on, on, the last, on the last uh, phase, so after the referendum outcome, we have a lot of more neutral um, users. Um, on the otherwise, reply networks show less uh, homophily because we can see that uh, uh, there is more exchange uh, among different groups. You can see, for example, the, the person in favor um, uh, talk more with the person against. Uh, that is normal because the reply um, activity in Twitter is um usually use it for this and so we the role of weak ties um is somehow not uh, clear yet in the um, information spreading processes so what um what are the weak the weak ties the weak ties are the nodes that connect uh, different uh, communities 
So we have polarized network, usually segregated networks usually have um, this um, community and with a few uh, links among them. And these are the, the weak ties. And um, it is, uh, for example, in, in uh, different study has been studied that um, these um, weak ties are very important to the information diffusion. Uh, we can say that um, uh, it, it, there is this um, also um, very um, nice work about Bakshi in 2015 that show um, how the, um, let's say, uh, the, the, um, the percentage of cross-cutting contact uh, um, diminished uh, uh, in the um, uh, Facebook network. Um, and this is exactly because the Facebook networks reflect the social circle. And in, I mean, their thesis is that um, it, this is not a consequence of the filtering algorithm um, um, they use, but it is some, something um, that comes from the society itself. Um, so how can we study the polarization in our model? We can say that the credibility is something related to the hoax. Uh, so we have this parameter uh, alpha that can go to zero, so a less credible hoax to one, that is a more credible hoax. But it is also depending on the personal attitudes of users. Uh, let's say the gullibility of users, because there can be a, a more skeptic user or a more gullible user. So we can assign different values of alpha to different users and see what happens uh, uh, of, um, if they interact together. So we uh, build our network uh, as a segregated network um, with a skeptic communities where users have a smaller credibility and the gullible communities with uh, we have a higher credibility. Uh, and we, we move the size of the gullible communities and the segregation. So the fraction of the edge uh, within the same community. Here we have different uh, examples of how these networks can look like bearing the segregation. So we have on the left a not segregated network and on the right a segregated network. And we studied how uh, the number of believers at the equilibrium change if we vary the size and the segregation. So with low forget probability, we have that uh, low segregation uh, that increasing the, the, the segregation, uh, the, the number of uh, believers at equilibrium increase. Uh, but with I forgetting probability, we have the, some opposite behavior. So here we can see an uh, um, animation uh, of what happens. And we can see that with high forgetting rate, there is more confusion. Um, so what happens, uh, uh, it happens that weak ties, if we have low forgetting probability, allow some gullible to become fact checker, that is good. But we have a high forgetting probability, so having some confusion, um, people that forget more frequently about their opinion, uh, some skeptic become believer, and this, of course, uh, does not limit the misinformation spreading. An interpretation of this uh, fact in our model is that the forgetting rate can be seen as a measure of how much the topic is discussed. So low forgetting rate could be conspiracy theories or stories that uh, involve persistent beliefs, while I forgetting rate could uh, represents gossip, short-lived be beliefs, like, I don't know, the fake news that uh, an actor, famous actor is dead, 
that uh, uh, can up, can maybe appear several uh, times, uh, and uh, so we we should in in the rest of the of our research we focus it on low forgetting rate so uh, persistent beliefs. Uh, the problem related to our model is that it's difficult to uh, validate with data because uh, we have the data, uh, for example, Twitter data, that are, that, uh, are a photography of the visible status, and then we have uh, the belief. So it's like an iceberg in which we can see, for example, we, we see a lot of maybe uh, people that um does not express do not express their opinion in uh, um, in the social media but actually uh, they have a strong belief uh, so it's very difficult to validate this uh, opinion dynamics models uh, so we are trying to um, resolve this problem uh, building a new model in which uh, we split the the start the, the believer and the fact checker status in um, two substates inactive and active and so it is a bit more complicated but we are still uh, working on it and actually we are now able to validate uh, with real twitter data uh, I hope that this will be out soon. Um, and still, uh, the result is that the segregation of gullible communities uh, can help the misinformation uh, spreading processes. So um, we found that non the non-trivial role of segregation of uh, uh, gullible communities, oh, sorry, um, in um, the diffusion of fake news it can reduce uh, the, the hoax spread, but sometimes it can also uh, help, actually. Uh, and we, we saw that the validation is very challenging because the source may be removed, as I showed before, and um, uh, the, the belief does not necessarily correspond to, to the online activity. So finally, we try to make a what if analysis to see, uh, to, to evaluate several fact checking strategies. So we made some assumption. Mm, the first one is that we live in a segregated society. Uh, with, we focus on low forgetting probability stories. Um, and we know from computational epidemiologists that uh, immunization uh, works better if some if some types of nodes in the networks uh, are vaccinated first. Uh, we consider so the the worst scenario, the one in which the verifying probability is zero, so no one uh, is verifying. And the fact checking can also uh, can only be uh, spread by um, the the neighbors that are so more more neighbors are fact checkers around you more likely uh, you will become fact checker. And uh, we we tried uh, different strategies. So the first one is um, to not. Uh, mm, do not take any actions. So we have the, the gullible and the, the skeptic. Uh, we have some cedars uh, skeptic, and we, we, sh we can see that uh, very soon the fact checker die out. So uh, the fact checking does not survive and the hoax becomes endemic. Then uh, we try to fix the 10% um, of the skeptic nodes uh, as eternal fact checkers. So uh, nodes that always spread the fact checking, the fact checking. Uh, they do not change uh, their belief. Uh, and these nodes are chosen at random in the skeptic communities. And this leads uh, to uh, the survival of the fact checking, of course, 
but uh, still the, the hoax uh, uh, will. Um, strategy three, we have 10% um, of uh, 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 skeptic nodes uh, uh, fixed to be external fact checkers, but now we, we uh, place this um nodes in the hubs so in the nodes with higher degree in the network and this you, we can see it is um a, a better uh, strategy uh because at least we i mean at least we limit the the the, the misinformation spread uh, and finally uh we name the the watcher strategies uh on the on the border of the skeptic communities we fix this eternal fact checking uh eternal fact checkers uh you can see on the on the border of the communities and this seems to be also a good strategy but look what can happen um it can happen that uh eventually the mm, the spreading can go through and conquer let's say the, the hoax can conquer the also the the skeptic communities so we when we deal with this um agent uh, simulation network we have uh, we also um, we always have to um take care of uh, this phenomena um, so we can say that actually that was the, the, the worst scenario possible. Uh, but the strategy of fixing the, the belief of uh, a portion um, of the fact checkers can indeed limit the misinformation spreading. Uh, and the location of these agents, of course, has a big influence, as, it, as we know from uh, computational epidemiology um then we can say that even if the, the banking services are not much visited directly that can still be useful so these um fact checker eternal fact checkers can represent the um, fact checking platforms uh, and uh, their usage um, should be strategically coordinated by a skeptic community so our research should help uh, to design new policies to um, empower this platform. Uh, I think I finish. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I want also to uh, say thanks to my previous collaborators at the University of Turin and uh, uh, Bloomington uh, Indiana University, uh, the Complex Network Center. And uh, I, I finished. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, do we have any questions? Well, we uh, should, yeah. Yeah, I have a question. So, you you briefly touched on uh, that you use Hoxie to um, like test or validate your, your simulation. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? We use OXI, um, uh, the, the data uh, collected by HOXI. HOXI, uh, just to <laughs> remind for other um, uh, people, is the platform developed by uh, Indiana University to track uh, fake news story uh, in Twitter. Uh, so we we collected uh, um, if, uh, uh, 30 stories, uh, uh, more or less, uh, in 2017-18, and we are trying to um, now um, validate our data, uh, this data, um, uh, with our model, so we, we can try to uh, uh, see um, the number, uh, outgrow the, the, the number of uh, Twitter users that share the, the fact checking uh, and uh, the number of um, Twitter users that share the, um, the hoax, basically. Okay.
Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. I actually wasn't aware of Hoxie, and I think that will be very useful for me as well. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. This was, uh, you can see, we have the uh, for against, of course, our believer and uh, fact checking. Uh, it is very, 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 very um, challenging. Um, um, let's say perform this uh, validation, um, of course, because um, uh, the, the, the nature of the data itself. Okay, thank you. Do we have other questions? Well, if I may, uh, I've been wondering, you mentioned that some people don't express what, who they are essentially on social media. And I did an online course once about the climate science denial. And I recall them mentioning a study that actually you know, the, the people who have the most extreme views are the most vocal ones, and those who are kind of not convinced to either side tend to often stay quiet. So I've been wondering if, uh, uh, how do you think this might affect the, the, the process in which you study? Yes, this, I mean, this is a problem related to the, <laughs> to the validation. Uh, because, of course, uh, um, it's like to deal uh, with not complete data, but this is exactly the way, the, 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 the reason for which we need model, <laughs> because we do not have complete data uh, about the, the process. Um, so we can just make uh, hypothesis <laughs> and that's this our, our model is one of these and um, actually if uh, you see this uh, new in this new model uh, we have basically a probability of activation so we try to uh, quantify um, the, the inactive um, the inactive users, but it's still, um, let's say, a uh, guess <laughs> that you make, basically. Um, but of course, all these uh, mechanisms uh, affect the, um, the, the process uh, of misinformation spreading and also what we can see that is always the top of the iceberg. Do you think these inactive believers and inactive fact checkers, do you think they are different in any way to the active ones? I mean, besides being inactive. <laughs> I'm wondering if there are, you know, any therapies that perhaps try to uncover Actually, we, we decided to, to, um, to model uh, the activation um as depending on the number of uh, how many active believers you have among your neighbor so if you if a users um so um, we can summarize uh, saying that uh, it is depending on how much the debate is active around you and this activate you and uh, uh, let's make express your opinion um, but of course, um, I think that more psychological studies and especially surveys should be uh, conducted about this. Um, also because a model like this has an only one possibility is to be validated um, entirely. It, it is with a, a big survey <laughs> during uh, uh, an epidemic process, but a uh, spreading pro uh, information spreading process, but it's clearly uh, difficult to to implement. Uh, so what we tried to to do was to uh, validate partially the model um, with um, let's say trying to to validate active believer and active chatter that is 
the only part that we can see in the data. Um, I mean, I don't see any other possibility to to deeply study this uh, hidden part, if not going around and asking to the people what they are thinking, <laughs> because of course uh, it is something that still, if, I mean, with big data and social media, we are able to do wonderful things, analysis, but of course we cannot read in the people's minds, <laughs> likely. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And one last question, if I may. So, um, according to 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 your models, do you think it would be, uh, or for example, if you have some. Uh, influencers who focus focus on fact checking, and maybe it's just uh, maybe I'm not correct here, but what I think happens is often that they gather people who are more or less like-minded from the start around them, and they don't really often reach out to the people who tend to believe in these myths and uh, fake news. And do you think that it would be uh, worthwhile to perhaps try to, I don't know, run for these influencers to, I don't know, so buy out some sponsored messages to get to the believers, or would this not work? Uh, I don't know, okay, is this something you can more or less assess with what your models say? Uh, um, yeah, somehow, but I mean, the um, um, yes, the problem is that also that um, uh, I don't know if I well understood your question, but um, many um, there are many efforts also in detection of uh, fake news, of course. Uh, so labeling uh, uh, news uh, as fake or not. But uh, what the uh, large part of the scientist communities um, um, agree with is that um, we should uh, empower fact-checking platforms, even if, of course, there are uh, some limitations or problems known like the confirmation bias and the, the hypercorrection effect, uh, because, I mean, um, we should not, um, um, let's say, count too much on limiting the information, uh, the, the, the access to information, and uh, we should avoid to uh, create blacklists of people, of course. So, um, I mean, studying the, the um, I mean, even with limitation, uh, we should try to, to empower, let's say, the uh, users uh, and uh, especially the fact checking uh, platforms uh, and trying to uh, make build uh, better platforms in that way. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any other questions? Well, if not, then thank you all for coming and thank you for this very interesting presentation. Okay, and thank you all. <laughs>